Facebook, and welcome to another edition of Social Media Geek Out. We have a special show today as we are celebrating the one-year anniversary of NASDAQ Trade Talks. And joining me today are two special guests, our CMO at NASDAQ, Jeremy School. Welcome. Hi. And Jill Malandrino, the host of Trade Talks. Talks. Welcome, Jill. Thank you very much for having me today. All right, so we're going to start with a very easy question. Let's talk about Trade Talks, what it is, what you've done, uh, the whole focus of the year, and, and who we reach. Well, it's really a special time of the year for us. NASDAQ officially turns one on March 9th, which, by the way, is the nine-year anniversary from the S&P 500 low. So we are celebrating the one-year anniversary of trade talks and the nine-year bull run in the S&P 500. So, so are you taking, can be not more are you taking responsibility? Full credit, full credit total full credit, 100%. Okay. Um, what's special with trade talks is we started off with Options education is our number one priority, and we have evolved into the number one social program at NASDAQ, focusing on multiple asset classes, including cryptocurrency, which is a super, super hot topic, um, market structure, and we even have a segment that deals with personal finance. So we cover everything from Bitcoin to taxes to merging your finances with your partner, derivatives trading, fixed income trading, um, with the top thought leaders from NASDAQ, and also with our partnerships around the financial industry. So it's been an incredible ride. Um, for trade talks, and we're super, super proud to be on social media. And it's evolved in, in a year, right? So we started off doing some Facebook and experimenting with Twitter, and now the show really is all on Twitter. So can you talk yeah. about that? So what we do is we broadcast live on Twitter, and we have some B-roll to show where the majority of our broadcasts take place from, from Studio B at the NASDAQ market site. So I'd love to check out some of that. And this Good morning and welcome to Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is JJ Kinahan, the Chief Strategist over at TD Ameritrade. Thank you very much, as always. Always great Long to time no see. Yeah, I've right? seen you in almost a week now. We see each other in different cities as we go along. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, January Investor Movement Index reading. Actually, almost 10% drop. Yeah, you know, just over, as you said, just over 9.5% drop. And I, I think it's interesting and it's great, you know, especially given these last couple of days in the so market. As you can see, that's one of our typical broadcasts. And I'm really happy that we were able to show that one. That's with J.J. Kinahan. He's the chief market strategist over at TD Ameritrade, one of my best relationships and, of course, an important relationship for NASDAQ. And the reason we broadcast live to Twitter is our audience is typically traders. And if you've been to any trading desk, you'll see they have their six, eight screens up, and one of them is dedicated to their news feeds and particularly Twitter, their hot twits or stock twits and their main Twitter feed and that's where they're scanning headlines versus having to see what's coming out in RSS feeds or what's hitting the wires or Bloomberg or what have you or what you're hearing on CNBC or Bloomberg. These are real-time quick 240 whatever character uh, headlines that are coming across and they use this data and information to trade from. Not only are we broadcasting from market site and also at headquarters downtown, we also broadcast from the Nasdaq Felix trading floor once a quarter for quad which options exploration. We are also broadcasting live from conferences about 12 to 15 times a year, your top industry conferences, including Inside ETFs, FIA, OIC, which is our flagship options conference. So I'd love to take a look at some B-roll from that as well. He is the director of trading over at TD Ameritrade. And besides the market hitting highs over here with potential tax bill Sorry. passage right now, it's pretty incredible, the market reaction. We can see it's at highs right now. Mm -hmm. There are some things in the tax bill. Are concerning. One of them is first in, first out, right. which TD Ameritrade has certainly been pioneering in trying to get the message out there with their investors. Tell us what this, how this is impactful to the tax bill. Sure. So first off, I think it's important to remember this is not a political position, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not a position on the overall tax reform legislation as a whole. This is really about ag. So you can see that's really pretty cool, live on our NASDAQ yeah, Felix absolutely. options trading sure. floor in Philadelphia. Now, are you reaching uh, retail and institutional traders? Yeah, we have a really interesting mix uh, in terms of our audience, retail investors, institutional investors, including asset managers, uh, institutional traders. We do a lot of work with um, our ETF and, ETF and indexing partners as well. Um, so there's a really interesting mix there. We also have a big millennial yep. presence as well. Um, we do a, a lot of content with uh, different colleges and universities that come to visit us at Market Site or when we go and speak with them. And it's really interesting to see just how in tune millennials are with trading and they're particularly interested in options and futures trading. Mm. So I, I'm curious, what three types of content work really well for trade talks? Is it 
guess? Is it talking about specific strategies? I mean, is there a formula? I would say the, the topics that work the best for us is market structure. It's a really hot topic, particularly cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and market structure. We do really well with personal finance and anything around um, ETF options and derivatives type of trading is really where our bread and butter is. Um, and even when we do fun things at market site, when we had the Westminster Dog Show here, and we sure. did some fun stuff with the dogs, it's like one of those days you love your job. I mean, who has a better job than I do? Traveling the country, meeting with the top financial experts in the industry, and then also hanging out with the Westminster Dog yeah, Show. You have to have fun. It you is know, at the end of this, the day. This whole, really and it, that's what's so unique about it, and you don't have the structure like network provides, for example, and we have the ability to run with all the ideas, and that's what I love about my job at NASDAQ and what I think is really great for millennials and younger folks coming out of school because we have the ability to build a brand within a brand. And I didn't have that opportunity when I started in trading in the late 90s. You, you joined a desk, that was your silo, you were in equities, fixed income, or options. Now I'm here representing every asset class in the industry, market structure, crypto, personal finance, building trade talks, Jill Malandrino, within one of the leading global uh, publicly traded companies on the planet. Okay, so, so Jeremy, I have a question for you. Jill's obviously done a, a great job with Trade Talks, yep. but That's Trade right. Talks did not happen within a vacuum. NASDAQ mm -hmm. has a, an enormous social presence, so yes. can you talk about how it's evolved over the years and you know, kind of where we are today? Sure, so uh, five years ago, the social presence at NASDAQ was very decentralized. We centralized it, we built an amazing team, which Jill's been a part of, and we've gone from a fragmented presence, presence of a few hundred followers per channel to reaching nearly three million. And what we saw was an opportunity to really differentiate the NASDAQ brand and the NASDAQ offering through social. It was an opportunity to take some risks with the brand, with different types of content, different types of programming, and it's really panned out well for us. Okay, and, and I th that's great. One of the risks, I think, is going to events, yeah. uh, right? And doing things live, like we're doing mm -hmm. here. How has that sort of experiential marketing uh, work for you and trade talks and you know where do you see that the advantages of that well the first thing is I want to piggyback on what Jeremy said that trade talks would not exist without the support of the multiple business units because what's so interesting about my brand is I transcend all the business units including yep. our corporate goals as well we do a lot of work with human resources promoting internal content for example um, a lot of the advocacy and um, ESG programs that we're yep. involved in uh, Trey Talks will help facilitate that. So that's where my role is really unique, but um, I really want to acknowledge and thank the teams, whether it's um, GTMS, GIS, but most importantly, our social and broadcast teams. We just wouldn't be here without their support and, and dedicated support, and, and that's what's interesting with doing stuff live at market site or at conferences, being able to think on the fly and being creative and um, really leveraging all the years of experience in terms of the content, yep. and then also um, what I do day to day. You, you can't go to school and kind of learn trade talks all of it is just experience I didn't come I came from trading I didn't come from broadcast or journalism although I'm back in school now yeah. for journalism because as the markets evolve so do we as participants and um, it, it's a lot of trial and error and it's a lot of perfecting your craft as you do this day after day year after year I would also say that one of the things we strive for at NASDAQ is serving as a hub for discussion around important issues and what social media has allowed us to do is amplify that discussion to amplify thought leadership from NASDAQ and then also serve as a mechanism for our clients to come in and discuss with us important issues that they see impacting the markets or the broader market structure. Right. So I, I'd like to talk, take it a little bit. You talked about risk, you've talked about trial and error. Both of you would be great to hear like what from your experience at NASDAQ have you learned either from you know making a mistake or a failure or trying something new that you didn't think was gonna work, you didn't know. I'd like to hear an example of something that is relevant for, for your audiences. Jill, maybe we could start with this, you. Um, this is an example, and it's also a slash blooper as well. Um, when you go live, you go live, and it's like, okay, game face. And there are times, in, in, especially when you're on the road, where sometimes technology doesn't always work. And it's, um, you, you, you want to keep your guests on track. You want to kind of make light of the situation. You want to make sure that you're running through your script and your content in your head. Because everything that we do for Trade Talks is largely unscripted. Yeah. Um, what we're doing, you know, we, we want to hear more about what our partners are focusing on, what they think about the industry, whether it's risks, opportunities, challenges. So um, I think dealing with that is the biggest challenge. But luckily, since we, we, we're doing so much content with Trade Talks, whether it's at Market Site, OLP, or on the road, we kind of have these things on autopilot. Now I'm going to cover a conference for two days right. tomorrow, you know? 
<laughs> you know, something's going to go wrong there. But um, it, these things have to happen. You have to have errors. You have to have challenges um, to get better from it. So yeah. they're welcomed. I would just to amplify that as it's more of a of a leadership lesson than maybe necessarily a specific social media lesson, and that is you have to hire great people and you have to give them the room to experiment and to stumble and to have great successes. And I would say trade talks along with cultural capital and several of our other shows have turned out to be huge successes. But along the way, we've had a couple here or there maybe that didn't work out as well. And that's okay, we view this as a channel in which we can experiment, take some risk and have, and have some wins too. And I think we've had a lot more wins Okay. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, when we covered our first conference when we were OIC um, in Scottsdale, Arizona last year, uh, I believe that was in early May, we were doing this with an iPhone rig. Yep. Now we have a dedicated you know, production person that comes on the road with us, and we have the ability now to co-brand and partner with um, you know, really high-level NASDAQ-listed companies that we have big relationships with. Um, we do monthly and quarterly content with ADP. We have TD Ameritrade in here monthly, quarterly, you know, yep. several times during the month, um, doing stuff with NerdWallet on the personal finance side, um, and uh, market structure with Viable Markets and with um, Greenwich Associates. So we, we you know, it took a couple of quarters to see what direction the content was going in and which partners would make sense. And we're at a good spot right now where we're not you know, scrambling to book, but we have dedicated shows, and it gives us an opportunity to touch points yep. every month, every quarter, with the social media and PR and marketing comms teams with our most important partners. And which great with conference coverage, it gives our sales team a reason to leverage the product as well. And, and, and trade talks is another way to build that relationship. Yeah, and social gives you the interaction, you know, real-time conversations. Yeah. Um, you know, we're getting comments on Facebook now. We'll get, be getting back to people. Twitter allows you to have real-time conversations. So can you both talk about that conversational aspect of social media and how that's changed the dynamic yeah, of NASDAQ? Well, uh, five or so years ago, NASDAQ was the first exchange to communicate with the trading community during a market-moving event meaning that there was an issue here or there, and we were using Twitter as an exchange in which to dialogue with the traders. And so people found that invaluable. And so that really kind of highlighted the power of the platform and what we could do in terms of communicating in real time, and it's exploded from there. Yeah, um, I think it, it gives the company a personality. One thing that's great with social media content is organic, and so they can see the personalities of who we are, our individual brands within the company, and I think that's what um, helps to build brands. It's not just, you know, clever newsletters or fun advertisements, but this is who we are. This is who we are as a company, and I love that that color can shine through. Um, and I know for you know my personal feed, I try and respond to people as much as I can, you know, as long as it's topical to the, the discussion that we're having. Um, but I would love to say, like, our, my followers for um, announcing the show and, and for the one-year anniversary, is it's been the most successful back and forth that I've had. I, it, I was surprised by the level of support. Yeah. So, so looking out a year from now, we're going to be celebrating the two-year anniversary here. We'll be back in the studio talking about how far we've come, but let's make some predictions on where you think Trade Talks is going sure. in the next year. Is it more events? Uh, what type of topics do you want to get into? Like, Where do you both see Trade Talks going for the company? I think in terms of the marketplace, we will continue to focus on crypto, on market structure, because those seem to be the big themes for 2018. I'd even throw fixed income in there as well. Again, as the markets evolve, so will our content. Um, I know specific goals for myself, um, you know, building up an event and conference coverage is always there, um, leveraging our studio assets more. And, you know, my, my longer term goal is particularly as we're all coming together at MarketSite over the next two to three years is to get longer format shows. On, on the tape, if you will, and uh, you know, leveraging our partners to help us get that done. And I think it's certainly doable seeing just how far we came in a year. Trade Talks has built an amazing brand. The social media team has helped build the NASDAQ brand, as has Trade Talks overall. My view is that Trade Talks, whether it's a splinter brand or Trade Talks brand, will elevate to start interviewing world leaders, business leaders, and those types of conversations as people see this forum as a compelling 
opportunity to discuss important issues. And I think that's going to happen this year for us. That's, that's a great segue, because I was going to ask Jill. Jill, who do you want to interview <laughs> in the next year? Like, who's on your wish list? Do you have a top three, top five? Because they might be watching right now, too. I know, you know what? I've, I've, I've thought about that a lot. Um, I, I think another interesting vertical that I would start to, uh, that I would love to start covering, I've done this in the past, is sports business, sports and entertainment yep. business. That's a huge vertical that, that crosses finance and um, personal interests. Um, I would. If, if I had my wish list, I'd like to start um, meeting with people on the senior banking and policy level, and I'm going to have the opportunity to do that when we're at the uh, Chamber of Digital Commerce uh, conference in D.C. over the next couple of days. We're going to be focusing on blockchain policy. Yep. So uh, that's kind of what I'm looking to, to establish and um, get on that higher level because my interest is policy and how that's going to shape the markets going forward. We've spent some time on the Hill, and there is a real appetite among pub public policymakers to amplify their message, to talk about real issues, and I do think that's a tremendous to opportunity. To humanize it yep, and, and to make it understandable, because at the end of the day, it impacts all of us, from the most experienced asset manager to you know someone coming out of school and, and dipping their toes in retail investment for the first time. And in order for everyone to understand it, they need to humanize it. And I think that's what's great with what we do with our social efforts at NASDAQ. They just, we're just not viewed as a stock exchange. We're bigger than yeah. that. We're, we're a fun tech company and we do have a personality and, and we're human yeah and we're a force in the economy but you're as active as anybody on social where would you like to see trade talks or or the broader social program evolve too i think you know adding more compelling guests in terms of the broader geopolitical landscape is really something that we we could uh, benefit from and yeah. so could our viewers you know the now ferguson's the tom friedman's of the world getting that larger, bigger global picture view from a macroeconomic standpoint, I think would be really exciting. And that's what's good with having the conference presence as well, because people will either come over to the booth where we are or they'll see where we're set up. Um, for media, in fact, for, for CODC, we are the only ones there with media presence um, in terms of live broadcast. And it gives you the opportunity for people to come by what's going on at this conference. Oh, I'd love to have, you know, my people involved. And it just continues to draw out that conversation. Um, we, did the, we did the same thing at Inside ETFs, sure. right? Now we have, we have Vanguard, they want to be on quarterly when we're over at Philex. Um, we have Lockwood Advisors that want to come on quarterly. So not only does it help build our relationship across the different business units, we get that visibility with that high level type of content. Right. Uh, you mentioned millennials earlier and talked about first time investors. I'd like to hear from you about focusing on millennials for the show. Where are the topics you're finding that they're most interested in? Is it crypto? Is it you know uh, more retail like stock investing, or is there is there something else? They always want to hear about cryptocurrency, and they're really interested in options and futures. But what they really want to hear about are talent trends, um, and that's a question I get a lot because again, coming from finance, going into media, and telling them that you have the opportunity to build a brand, they really want to hear about talent trends. They want to know how do I discuss um, my salary with my peers, or how right. do I go and ask for a raise? Um, we're doing some content with a uh, nerd wallet uh, and. May and June, okay, I'm out of school now. How do I go and approach an employer or discuss with my peers what my salary is going to be? How do I save? Um, do I want to share finances when I get engaged? That sort of thing. That's what they want to hear about. Anything as it relates to personal finance, crypto, and sort of you know the more exotic options, futures kind you of thing. You raise a good point because that's one thing we didn't really talk about is NASDAQ as a technology company is actively spending time recruiting top tech talent. And so the more that we can be seen as a trusted source of quality information, the more people are going to have an affinity to this brand. And when you have to recruit the number of people that we have to do around the globe in a given year, it's really important. And so this is another almost like uh, employer branding opportunity for us. And what's great with us is we have that monthly relationship with the ADP Research Institute and that segment of the show within Trade Talks is what's happening with jobs and wages. Yeah. Um, and what we discussed yesterday when we had um, Ahu Dirmez on with me was there's the big trend right now is job switching. And we talked about what sectors that you switch from to and from, where is that wage growth? Uh, we do something quarterly, again, with the ADP Research Institute specifically on talent trends. So we have that monthly and quarterly content out there to support our millennial, and it's just about all of our audience when it comes yeah. to jobs. And yeah, so interesting point on the brand, uh, just in terms of it's a trade-focused show focused on traders, yet it impacts every part of the business yeah. when you think about absolutely. it. absolutely. I think I, I, I don't. I would hazard that the vast majority are traders, but that to the extent that we're getting a, a strong millennial audience, which we are, those are future Nasdaq employees. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. And what's great is uh, we have multiple business units, whether it's GIS, GTMS, market technology, and they are um, having you know their partnerships come on, and that's where we get a lot of the, the tech or alternative data uh, people that we're showcasing, and that's really attractive to our audience. So again, what's great with Trade Talks, um, you know, kind of came on, and as we built support within the business units and across the organization, this is why we're here where we are today, and it really shows how we work together as teams to build our individual brands, and of course, the corporate brand. And when we had our, um, um, our on-site meeting, um, yep. just the marketing team in general, the thing that impressed me the most when you said, you have to look at yourself as a brand ambassador. Absolutely. So when we host, we hosted Westminster College here a couple of weeks ago, myself and John Graff and, and Lindsay, and you know, to come in and you're recognized as a NASDAQ host, you kind of, like, you hold your head up high. We are responsible. This is, you know, we, we're at market site every day. We see all the opening and closing bell ceremonies. These kids might only see this once in their lifetime, yep. and they will remember this for the rest of their life. And I take my responsibility as a NASDAQ brand ambassador incredibly serious for reasons just like that. Do you? Yes. Yeah. I hope so. Of course. I hope so. Of course I do. <laughs> uh, last question for you, just uh, looking ahead at the week. What kind of guests or who's coming on the show uh, this week that people can watch on Twitter? All right. So uh, Wednesday and Thursday is going to be really interesting because uh, we're going to be down in D.C. at Georgetown University, the McDonough School of Business. We do content with them about two to three times a year covering blockchain policy. Um, so we'll have guests on from IBM, Cognizant, um, a couple policymakers on as well. Uh, we'll have NASDAQ folks on like um, uh, Kyle O'Connor to kind of Great. talk about the blockchain technology landscape. And then we're back here in studio on Friday with our weekly market review at Chris Dearborn, who's one of the managing directors on the mid desk. So we have weekly content with them. Um, and we're going to wrap it up at 2.15 on Friday with um, Sean Cruz. He's one of the trading specialists over at TD Ameritrade. So super excited to have Chris and Sean on for the March 9th nine-year anniversary of the bull market and the one-year anniversary for Trade Talks. All right, and I'm going to start with you, and then we're going to go to Jill, and then we'll wrap it uh -oh. up. Uh-oh. Fun, fun time. Uh, on Twitter, what is your most fun account to follow? I'll, I'll start. Oh, uh, Darth Vader, for me, is great on really? Twitter. Really? Yes. Oh, no. oh man. I'm going to – I will say the most compelling Twitter campaign that I've ever seen was J.J. Watt after the Houston storms and what he managed to raise in terms of – millions and millions of dollars. I said fun, but that's awesome too. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, fine. You dodged the bullet. <laughs> so from a trading perspective, there's a handle called Stock Cats. Okay. And Stock being, Cats. Being, he, has, he just has a snarky commentary and um, it, it's depending on what's going on in the market, he'll, he'll kind of opine about that. And he always throws in some things with his cats as yeah. well. And his cats look like mine. So All right. um, I don't even know if he follows me, but I'll have to <laughs> DM him <laughs> this video we'll and be like, you got a well. shout out. You'll you make that happen, right? Yes, we'll take, take care of the cats. Okay. All right, Jeremy and Jill, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for everything. Uh, everybody on Facebook, thank you again for watching another edition of Social Media Geek Out. Leave your comments. We'll get back to you and enjoy more programming from the NASDAQ.